my name is Beck and welcome to a review for White Knight. This is book 9 in the Dresden Files and this time I'm going to do something a little bit different because in the past I've done spoiler free reviews and then I've done a spoiler talk with my partner but this time I'm going to talk about spoiler free stuff first and then I'll talk about spoilers. So you'll see a green line around this portion of the video that means there's no spoilers. When I talk about spoilers that'll be red outlined so I will warn clearly when I'm going to switch so you don't need to worry but just so you know when you're skimming through the video Red means spoilers, green means you're okay. So without further ado, let's get into talking about this. And I'm going to be careful again because once again, the blurb has spoiled on Goodreads what this book is actually about. And it goes into too much detail. So I'm going to give you the bare bones so that you can kind of make some assumptions but not know exactly what's going on. All you need to know about the plot for this is that there is a serial killer and they are hunting down magic users. Dresden is trying to therefore hunt down this serial killer. There's also a conspiracy afoot and also somebody close to Dresden may be involved somehow but he's not quite clear on that fact. So that is what this is about. Let's get into my thoughts. I'll start off with the complaints and there's only two small ones and then I'll jump into the rest of it. So the complaints I have is the recap. Every single time we hear about Dresden we already know now nine books into the series what he's doing, where he lives and who his close and nearest and dearest are except it goes through that every time and it's just taking away from our precious page count and I would like a recap done before we even start the book. But anyway that is just a small gripe. My second complaint is more of a personal style thing and that is the miscommunication trope was used in here. Only as a sub plot and not as a driving force of the overarching plot but it is still something that I don't like to see in books and Jim Butcher leaned on that a little bit in here which I didn't particularly enjoy. I wanted to note it and kind of frown at it as something that I didn't like but it didn't impede my enjoyment too much of the book overall so I can kind of let it slide but if it keeps happening it's going to be really annoying but miscommunication it happened let's just move right past it. Okay now to the things that I enjoyed. One of them is of course Dresden's magic using and I love how he is growing so much as a character. I've said this across the rest of the books. I'm always surprised by how much Dresden develops as a character and now we've got more of his emotions in play. We have a sense of his background and his training as well. I'm being vague obviously for a reason. I'll talk about stuff specifically later but I loved how he is powerful and we know he's powerful and he's starting to express that in the book and I really enjoyed those moments. I also love how identity was a key theme in here. This book also really explored Dresden's political kind of involvement as well as his day-to-day -day interactions and that really formed more of a broader picture and a detailed picture about who Dresden is as a character and what choices he's making and anything that is informed by character that way I just eat it up so naturally I absorbed as much of that as I could. The plot also really surprised me which is nice because we always love being surprised by a book. As well as the themes I really enjoyed identity power and growth as the central forces in here and obviously we go through Dresden's perspective but we hear about the other characters around him as well and I can't say it without spoilers because these are side characters that have only kind of appeared in the previous books but I liked the development of two of the specific side characters in here in terms of identity and power as well and the questions that they had to ask themselves about that. I loved all of those things into playing and it's one of the reasons that I keep coming back to Butcher, these central themes that he really knows how to tease out of his characters. That said though, I got a little bit surprised by the fact that a particular plot line linked to one of the specific characters in here was wrapped up so quickly. I was expecting that to go on a lot longer or at least a few books longer and the fact that it wrapped up in this book it felt a little bit neat. It was almost like Jim Butcher is wrapping up a few loose ends before he delves into I don't know some bigger antagonist or something that is going to pull more of Dresden's focus and so he needed older storylines wrapped up so that he could do that. That's kind of what it felt like but at the same time on the other side of that coin I liked how it was balanced and I think it was done in a way that was believable. It was just something that I noticed and thought oh I thought that was going to be a longer storyline but it turned out obviously to be tied up in here. So it's something again that surprised me about the plot. So it's not a complaint it's just something that I went oh when I was reading and I didn't expect it to wrap up so soon. But I liked the way it did it. I think it was true to character. It didn't rush the pace or anything and it was believable for the plot and the characters. So it definitely fit into the book. It just surprised me as a reader in general. And then one last thing I want to touch on here before I get into my rating and then spoilers after that is the 
that I didn't expect Ramirez to show up in here. Ramirez is one of the Wizards of the White Council. He's one of the younger ones and whenever he has appeared in the previous books I felt a little bit iffy just because of the type of character he is. He's very overtly sexual and that seemed to be all his character was but Jim Butcher has this thing where he manages to tease out more development of characters over the course of his books and make them not just a caricature or a stereotype and he very much did that with Ramirez in here and I found that I was actually caring about what happened to him and I loved seeing Ramirez's power as well. It was pretty cool to see the interplay between him and Dresden and I like seeing the relationship there get built on and have more nuance to it compared to what has happened before. It's just also nice in general to see some characters come together and build a report that you didn't realize would come together in this way. So I quite liked Ramirez in here. He showed a depth that I didn't expect him to have because he's kind of been that stereotypical aloof sexualized character that was just like in the background that Dresden would draw on for laughs every now and then. And in here there was more of a gravity to him which I really appreciated. So it's not a shock that I enjoyed this book. I gave it five out of five stars and now I'm going to jump into spoilers so if that is not your thing click away from this video now. Give me a thumbs up when you're about to leave but let's jump into the spoiler portion of this video now. So I'm going to be changing to red. I talked before about magic and I really loved how Molly was Dresden's apprentice in this book and we got to explore that relationship and her dynamic with understanding power and making choices. I also like that we got to explore Dresden in a more reflective way because he's looking back at all of the magic and the beginner magic that he learned and he's refreshing himself on it and because he's doing that he's realizing more strength about himself and I really liked that. I love how it enabled that self-reflection of his character. I love how he was starting to feel old because he'd seen Molly and even Ramirez do things and react to things in a way that he recognizes he would have reacted to things and he has reacted to things but he's now got a different focus and a different stance in the world based on his past experiences. Even Elaine in some parts hadn't experienced the same things that Dresden did so he was giving her advice and backing her up in certain aspects too and I like that we've got that broadening of his character. At the start he was just like this happy gunslinging wizard who would do what he wanted because he was a rogue and now he's building up more people that he cares about around him and he's building up more responsibility and power because of that and he's starting to have a bit of an identity crisis and I like that he's got a support network around him that is enabling him to do good things and giving him avenues of trust and that's one of the conversations I really liked with Ramirez nearer to the end of the book how he was like dude you need to trust me I'm gonna help you and how Dresden is starting to build this kind of balancing point against the black council or even the white council. He's building his own factions of people and courts and his own net of power if you will and I, I really like how all of those things are starting to come into play and I think those are going to be explored even later in the rest of the books. And like I said before it feels like Dresden is building up all of these characters around him to go up against a big foe especially with the thing that tied off in the story that I mentioned before and I was referring there to Lashiel, Lash as Dresden calls her and how she basically sacrificed her identity in order to save Dresden and so she had her own agency and she formed her own choices and doing that she became separated from Lashiel the Force and became Lash as associated with Dresden and she had her own power and her own choices and I like that that was kind of mirrored in Dresden as well because you could start to see him go down the dark path especially in confrontation with the ghouls as we got in a flashback. That flashback with Dresden and the orange juice and how he terrified all of the apprentice wizards around him must have been like a huge red flag for his character growth and I really love the gravity of that situation because it made me go holy crap he could really go dark side here and he chose not to. And also the ghouls. I love the fact that we got the ghouls back because they are the most terrifying mythical creature slash villain that I have encountered in this series so far. They just you blow them apart and they still come for you so they are terrifying. I 100% loved seeing them in here. It added a dimension to this book that made the stakes seem higher especially for the group of characters that we are now experiencing. And also those fight scenes I'd like to add on with the ghouls and just in general were very well visualized. I could really picture them in my head. They were very well described and the action and the pace of them felt very balanced as well. They weren't rushed, I could visualize them and they had the emotional beats that I would expect from a fight. It wasn't just spectacle. Some of it was, which was pretty cool, 
and add magic and explosions in there I'm gonna love it but it also had a purpose and I like that as well and just a side note I like that the trauma of Dresden being apprehensive about fire was carried through because that was evident in this book as well and I like that there's a continuity there I really appreciate that and then as for the plot development there was a moment in here where Dresden was using Little Chicago that city he's built in his basement really cool he was using that to eavesdrop and track two of the bad guys in this book and I really appreciate that Jim Butcher didn't go, hello, I am bad guy A and I am from this faction of bad guys and I am trying to track down X criminal. He didn't go and label everything. He made the conversation seem vague and I appreciate that he did that because it wasn't spoon feeding the reader or the listener if you listen to the audiobooks he wasn't spoon feeding us which I really liked because sometimes in a book you'll just get the characters relaying information for the sake of the reader rather than whether they would do that realistically as a character and these villains already know the context of what they're talking about so why would they tell me exactly what they are talking about in very easy terms to follow when they already know all the context of the conversation so I like that Again, Jim Butcher was very good at detail here. He gave you a few little crumbs, but he wasn't specific and the characters wouldn't be specific in that scenario anyway. So again, with a 10 out of 10 characterization for this so far. Oh, I didn't mention it before, but also Molly's character development absolutely made me cry. Loved it. And I just love her innocence and her wanting to become powerful and having all this responsibility as a kid and not knowing how to handle it. Also, Jim Butcher was really out here making me suspect Thomas when really he was just flexing his miscommunication trope. I'm so glad that that got resolved at the end because if that didn't get resolved I would not be a happy camper because I really like Thomas and I really love the interactions between him and Dresden. It brings out a new side to both of them and they're very much on different paths and I like that there's a divergence there of their pathways but they're still half brothers and so they want to keep connected but they also want to protect each other. They've got this weird like blind spot with each other where they just don't tell each other things. And I thought Dresden had grown out of that, at least doing that with Murphy at the beginning of the book, but it seems to be a family trait because Thomas has picked right up where Dresden left off. So hopefully that's not something that keeps getting revisited because if it is, like I said before, I will be frustrated, but I have my fingers crossed and I have my hopes high. So we'll see on that. Additionally, with the interactions between Thomas and Dresden, they do the pretend gay couple thing, which is hilarious, but if it's something that keeps getting drawn upon when there are no outwardly other queer characters in the books, it's going to be a little bit of a like, mm, really? It it makes me side eye a little bit, but it's something that I find funny and will continue to find funny, but I just wish it was a little bit more balanced. So again, maybe a little bit of a gripe. Maybe I should have mentioned it at the beginning with a third kind of thing that minor disappointed me, but it's just something that I noticed and wanted to point out. All around, I find these characters really endearing and trustworthy and I like Jim Butcher's writing style and his keenness at developing character because if he's convinced me of anything he's convinced me of his characterization because even if a character is introduced in one book maybe two chances are they're going to get even more depth introduced later which he's done with a bunch of different characters now and then I think that's all I really had to say I'll just run over a quick recap so obviously I love the characterization I love that Dresden was struggling with identity growth and power but he has his friends around him for support as well there's also that plot conspiracy between the White Council and this aforementioned Black Council that I'm intrigued to see get developed in future books because it is only just starting to simmer on the surface and I'm all for investigating this fully as a driving plot force rather than just something that's happening on the fringes of another plot. Five out of five stars. Like I said before, I'm going to continue reading this series. I'm going to continue loving this series. At least I hope so and I expect to. But thank you so much for watching this video. I'll chat to you down in the comments and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.